Right, hi everyone. So this is the last vid for the third method, all about using the um, harmonic form. So it's showing us different equations, and we have to work out the max and min. Now, in the past, with a merrily, oh, I've got my smart in case I've it. Ah, now I have. In the past, with a merrily, just said max is when the red box is one. Min is when the red box is minus one. And that kind of works, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes it doesn't work at all, and we have to use zero. So we'll, we'll work through these and we'll see. But what I'm thinking about is what makes that equation, two plus three lots of something, the biggest value I can get. And I'm always looking between minus one and plus one with a potential for zero if it doesn't quite work, and I'll show you that one later. So I want two plus three lots of one, because that's going to give me the biggest value for that equation. So that'll give me five. So that occurs when my red box is equal to one. Now, geez, that scared me. Is this going to stop? Yeah. God, I don't know how scary that. Um, right, the minimum is when I make the box minus one. So two plus three lots on minus one. So that gets me minus one there. So that occurs when the red box is equal to minus one. So that's what we always used to tell people. That was the way you did it. But the thing is, they got a little bit crazy with the equations. So if you look at the second one, I've got to think what would make that the biggest possible number going. Knowing that, I'm really just looking at minus one or one, with a possibility of it maybe being zero. So if I put a minus one into that equation, I get five minus four, lots of minus one. So five minus four, lots of minus one. And that'll give me nine. Whereas if I'd used one, it would have been five minus four lots of one to give me one. So it kind of goes against what we always used to teach, which was just put the red box equal to one for the maximum and minus one for the min. I've got to think about the outcome as if I've changed that red box into a one or a minus one. So that occurs when cos of theta plus 13 equal to minus one. So the minimum is five minus four lots of one. So that would occur when the red box is equal to 1, which is counterintuitive and what we always used to teach. So I've got like a nice one. I've got one which is a little bit messy we've got to think about it. And then I've got some more because, you know, it only gets worse. So let's have a look at this one now. So here's my issue. With this red box. Because if I square 1, I get 1. If I square minus 1, I get 1. So both of these would give me the maximum value. So if I use 1 or minus 1, I get the same value. Try and write that down here. So in this case, I need to look at zero as well. So I've got to think the maximum can occur if it's a plus or minus one. It doesn't matter which one it is, because that's being squared. So it always come out as five as an answer. So my red box. be equal to plus or minus 1, because I was squaring that answer. So that one's a little bit messy. What it does mean then is if plus or minus 1 just always give the maximum value, I need to think about my minimum value, and that's using 0, because it only bounces, because my cos graph only bounces between oops, a plus 1 and a minus 1. 
To get rid of that two lots of it, I need to use zero. And that's something which people don't like doing. So that's when cos of theta plus pi by 3 is equal to zero. So that one's going to get you a little bit. But it's all because of the squared. Whew, right then, let's have a think about this one then, the fractions. So I do my red box. So around the sign of theta minus 20. So I'm thinking, there's no squares on that, so I'm just thinking minus 101. Now then, for the maximum value, because this is on the bottom, your maximum value is when you're dividing by a small number. So your maximum value is if you divide by a small number. And your minimum value is when you divide by a big number. So you've got to think about that for a little minute. So to me to get the maximum value of the function, the whole thing, for it to have the maximum value, it has to have a number that's small on the bottom. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Whereas 10 divided by 200 is a lot smaller. So this maximum value would happen when the bottom line is as small as possible. And the only way for that to happen in this case is if it was 2 over 4 plus 3 lots of minus 1. That should give you the smallest value on the bottom line. So that's going to be what? 2 over 1, which is 2. So that actually happens when sine of theta minus 20 is minus 1. Now I'm not just guessing these, I'm thinking about what numbers you're getting from them. So that must mean then, but for the maximum value, it's 2 over, sorry, for the minimum value, 3 lots of 1. So that would be 2 over 7, which is quite small. And that's when sine of theta minus 20 is equal to 1. So you've got to think about, if I put the minus 1 over the 1, instead of that box, instead of the whole box, what's it going to give me? And if none of them work, then go with 0. So look at this one. If I just do my page again, uh, do my red box, sorry. So same idea. So on the bottom, if I want the maximum value, it's got to be as small as it can be. But because of this minus, we have to be careful. I just pressed the wrong thing then, didn't I? I did. <clears throat> so for this, I want it as small as it can be. But because of the minus, I want the 1 to be a positive and not a negative. So that would give me 5 over 4. And that's when the sine of theta plus 50 is equal to 1. For the minimum, I want it over a big number. Uh, so that would be seven over, uh, 5 over 10, which is a half. So you just got to choose the right number. And that would happen. To be fair, I don't think I've really seen an exact question that does that. There. So that messes with your head. The choice of these really messes with your head. Now we've got some questions after that. So that's our third lesson done. So well done, everybody. Bye-bye.